Hello everyone, Dr. Lehman here back with a really important concept that's going to carry you through the rest of the semester and that is Python classes. So in this video we're going to get started on implementing some Python classes. So uh, last time, last video, we talked about data types and their relation to Python and how Python uses them in memory. Well, in Python there is a mechanism as we mentioned last time for implementing your own data types and that mechanism is called a class. Right? Now if you have a Java programming background you're very familiar with classes and maybe you got exposed to classes before. Uh, that's fine. We're going to go over them again and we're going to make sure you really understand them because throughout the rest of this semester, the rest of this course, you will be writing classes and you will be using them to solve more complex problems. And if you remember last time we asked the question, why do you have data types in programming? And the answer was, well, to abstract details away so you can focus on solving bigger problems. That's what we'll, we will use classes for in this course, which is kind of wrap up some details of things in little packages called classes and data types called classes and then we'll use them to solve other bigger more interesting problems. Okay so in Python classes define a new data type just like you have string class, int class, etc. allowing new instances of that type to be used in code. Classes have instance variables for storing data, right? Remember, data types have two things. They have data and they have operations. Well, in Python classes, the data are kept in what we call instance variables. We're going to talk about instance variables in the next video. And then the second thing you get with a data type are the operations you can perform with that data type. And Python classes, these things are called, they're not called operations, and they're not called functions, they are called methods, okay? So, let's get into it. Um, what I would like you to do is fire up an interpreter, uh, preferably PyCharm, because we're going to be doing a couple of lines of code at a time, and you're going to want to rerun everything. Um, so get your editor open, and then anytime you see code on the screen, I want you to follow along. Okay, so uh, in, your, in your code, <laughs> so type this up. Here we are going to define a very, very simple class and we're going to call it student. And this is going to create a new data type in Python for us to use. Now this new data type that we're going to create, it's only going to be there like for as long as our, our current uh, Python interpreter is running. It goes away, right? If you reboot your computer or Python crashes, forgets all about it, about this class you create. All right, so how to create a class in Python? Well, you need this keyword called class, should be easy to remember, and then you give it a name. Okay, uh, class names in Python are capitalized, right? They are camel case or title case, as some people call it. It's capitalized. And then inside our very basic, very simple class that we're going to call student. So we got class and then the name of the class, colon. We come down and we, uh, we do our four spaces in or our tab character in. We are going to define a method. Now remember, methods in class terminology are the operations of the data type. There's going to be a lot of vocabulary in this uh, lecture, so you need to really let it sink in. Maybe you need to watch it a few times because there's a lot of super important terms we're going to keep introducing in this lecture and just use over and over and over again throughout the semester. Okay. Inside our class student, we are defining def a method. Okay, method is the operation on our data type, but methods you can just think of them as a function from Python that is declared inside a class. Okay, so it's a function. You all know how to define functions, right? And what functions can do. Python methods are just functions that are inside a class. Okay, everything you can do with a Python function, you can do with a method. It's just that the method lives inside the class. So I want you to think of classes and think of instances of classes when you're using them. 
think of them as a little box, right? And things live inside that box that you need to get access to and can use to solve problems, right? So to define a method, it looks very similar to defining a function. You start with the def keyword and it's tabbed over here so you know it belongs inside the student class. Then you give it a name, okay? Method names, function names in Python should be all lowercase. And then there's always, always one, at least one parameter, and that is called self, okay, just like this. Self is a keyword in Python. Uh, we're not going to go into what it means right now. We will get to that back at the end of this lecture, okay? So, but remember, remember, anytime you will ever define a method inside a function, self must be the first parameter, and it must always be there. Okay, so hop over to your code, make sure you've got this typed in. Your code should, uh, well, actually I'm gonna come back here. Okay, this is just the class definition. If you go ahead and run your code, it won't do anything, right? It, it, it should run, but there won't be any output, okay? That's because what we're defining here is we're, think of it as defining a blueprint. This is what a student class can do but you still, we have to actually create one of these things and use it, right? Just like Python has string classes that are defined, well, one string class that is defined, you still have to make an instance of a string class in order to, to use the string, right? So here's how we create an instance of our student class. We call student the name of the class, it's gotta be this, right? followed by open paren, close paren. So this looks a lot like a function call or a method call. And in fact, that's what it is. It's calling a special method called a constructor. We will get come back to constructors in a later video, okay, next video. But anyway, just know, hey, I need a new student I wanna play with. You call it like this, okay? This call returns an instance of the student class and assigns it to the variable x. This is just like you saying X gets one or X gets the string Alice, right? X gets student gives you a new instance of this, okay? You can have multiple instances, X gets student, Y gets student, Z gets student, make as many as you want, just like you can with strings or ints. Now, I wanna call this thing. How do I call this method? You use this syntax, X dot, this is the dot operator, say name, okay? So this calls the say name method on the instance of X, right? So go over to your code. Your code should look like this. Okay, zoom in a little. And if I go ahead and run this, it's a little gray up here because I don't have the appropriate white space, I think. Oh, no, it's a different warning. Ignore that. Here's the code we had from the slide. Go ahead and run it. Right. So you can see down here, the output did happen. So what happens here? What's going on? Line six, we get a new instance of the student class and think back, right? Think back to the last lecture. Classes are like the Kia Sorento 2020 four front wheel drive L or whatever it was. When you do this, you're saying, hey, give me one of those. You go to the heap and you get one, okay? And now I'm saying x dot say name, whoops. So this says, all right, take my instance, my particular car of student, and on that instance, invoke the say name method, okay? So up here, say name, what does say name do? This is just now like a function call. You call this and it says, oh, okay. The user, the programmer wants me to do say name. Where is say name? Let me go up here to the definition. It does any parameter argument substitution it needs to do. We'll come back to that later. And then it goes inside the function and runs the function body. Okay, which in this case does the print statement. And then it comes back out to where it was called, right? So we leave line three, we come back to line seven, right? 
and we're done. We continue on, right? We could do more here. So let me just print something, right? So we're going up here, invoking this method, looks a lot like a function, finishing our execution. We come back down to line seven, then we go on to line eight. All right, that's all that's going on here. Not too bad, right? It's just kind of like a funky function, but with extra steps. All right, let me get out of this, go back to my slides for a second. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So you saw the dot operator that we used before. Well, you have seen the dot operator before in your life programming, right? Like if you were using a list, you could append to a list, right? And you called X, here's my list X dot append something. Okay. Um, or maybe you had string, string dot split, string dot strip. This dot operator, what it does, what it's really doing is it is used to call a method that is defined within a class. Okay. So when you call x dot append, what Python does is it goes to its class definition for the list, goes down, finds the append method, and then invokes it, right? And the method is just a, a fancy function. Okay, so that's what the dot operator does. It calls things, calls methods, and later we'll use it to access instance variables on instances of classes. Okay, let that sink in, right? Understand what the dot operator is doing. It's going to the class instance and calling a particular method on it. Okay, now you know how those methods are defined. They're defined this way. All right, let that sink in a little bit. You can also have instance methods with uh, arguments. We'll do that here in a little bit, okay? All right, but let's go back and play with some more classes, right? So what I want you to do is copy and paste that student class you just created and make a different class called another student. Okay, just change the name to another student, but have their same name print out something different, right? So, and then we're going to call this code x gets student, x dot say name, y gets another student, y dot say name. Okay, so let's go do it together. Okay. All right, so here's my code. What I said to do is copy this stuff. Okay, copy and paste. And I said, rename this to another student and change uh, this to print out a different name, Alice. Okay. So these look very similar, right? But they are different. I am actually going to create two separate classes here. And we'll prove to ourselves that it is two separate classes. So I'm going to create an instance. I'm going to get an instance of this other class, another student, and I'm going to tell it to say its name. Okay, so what do you expect that the output's going to be? Well, it should print, first I get x, say my name is Lucas, then get a value, this different class, and call say name, and say my name is Alice, right? So, this is where, so, like, the methods are really important. Okay, so Python is not going to get confused. We've got two methods here that are have the name say name, but they're defined in different classes. So even though you're calling the same looking thing down here, Python knows the difference. It knows that when you call x dot say name, it should go to student because that's what x is. It's a student and call students say name. Y is another student, a different class. So when you call Y dot say name here, it's saying, oh, wait a minute, go to Y, which is an instance of another student, and call its say name. Okay, so let's go back to our slides and try and draw a picture about what's going on in here. Right? So here's a visual representation of what we've got going on. 
it's a class it's called a class diagram maybe you saw these uh, in a previous class but it's a way of thinking of classes and instances of classes visually so X in our code is an instance of the class student and the class student has defined on it a method called say name Y is an instance of the class another student and it also has a method in it called say name all right so let's run it again but let's change it up just a tiny little bit okay so we're going to take our code and we're going to reuse or we're going to reassign the variable x okay so let's go over here x gets another student and then x dot say name right student variables these variables for your custom data type they can be reused uh, ignore that stuff down there at the bottom um, my name is Alice my name is Lucas right from our previous lectures remember variables just hold references to objects in memory to instances of classes that live in memory so here X is a student and we call say name here I reassign the value I create another student instance assign it to X and then call X say name it all works out just fine okay go play with this in the Python tutor plug this into the live visualization and step through it item by item so you can see what happens right all right let's go back to our slideshow again Whew. instances classes objects oh my you know these are <laughs> they're not the most exciting words on the planet but they have very different meanings and it's important that you concretize in your head what those different meanings are okay. classes think of them as the blueprint for the data type okay they're kind of like function definitions the function doesn't like run right away you have to call it to get a function that you define to do something right go define a function in Python it doesn't actually get used until you call it same thing with classes classes are the blueprint of a new data type and they define its operations and, and data but the class definition itself with that class keyword it runs but it's not like really gonna do anything until you use it somehow instances of classes right when we call this something that looks like this this constructor call they actually create an instance of that class in memory Python talks to the heap and says hey I need one of these things where should I put it and then it puts it there right so you need to get an instance of a data type an instance of a class before you use it to compute to do stuff right okay so classes instances of a class and then objects okay objects are the term for all instances in memory in Python everything in Python is an object everything that lives in memory in Python is an object Python is an object oriented language okay you may have heard that term before Java is also an object oriented language it just means that in inside itself Python is organized everything in memory is organized around this notion of objects okay here's some code all right look at this just take a look at the code where is the class here okay the class is this whole thing this whole block is the class but again it's just a blueprint when you run code if all you have is this you don't get any output you're not doing anything if you just have this part it's a class definition just like you have had function definitions before they tell Python what to do X and Y down here they take on instances they are references to an instance of class student okay an instance of this guy but they're actually different this is something different it's an instance of what Z is an instance of class string Whew. class instances blueprint using the things all of them every single one of them are objects in memory okay because it turns out whenever Python reads this thing it 
creates an object in memory and then anytime you want one of these guys a student it goes out and kind of grabs that 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 definition that you put up there in memory and uses it okay so all of these things are objects in memory objects are the generic term for stuff that lives in memory in python okay Whew. let's go back to methods for a second because they're they can be flexible all right so let's say that instead of hard coding in my name is we want to pass some data to our method uh, as a parameter well you can do that right um, let's go edit our code so that our code can take a parameter all right so I'm back here in my code let me get rid of the another student I just want to get getting rid of another student let's start back where we were well instead of hard coding my name is Lucas let's make this a parameter okay my name is and so I want to do something like say x dot say name Lucas okay all right well what I will do is I will add a parameter up here and in my print statement I will use this parameter okay this is just like defining a function that takes a parameter except except obviously the huge like elephant in the room here difference is the self guy so the self guy is gonna stay there for now okay we're gonna talk about him in a minute let's explain what he does all right but I can run this okay go ahead and run this okay print my name is name I've called say name with Lucas. I can call say name with Alice. I can call say name with Bob. Just duplicating the line here with control D or command D. Right? So now my method that I've created, it can take a parameter, right? And based on the argument value I give, Lucas, Alice, Bob, it prints out something different. Okay? This looks a lot like a function definition. Okay, pretty cool. Um, if I wanted to you could add you can absolutely have multiple uh, parameters okay so if I try and I can add last name here now uh, Python's mad at me right I added a parameter up here but I'm not using it in this method call say name is missing one required positional argument last right it's yelling at me because I forgot to put everything that I need that this function needs to run or excuse me this method needs to run in the calls All right there it goes it's a lot happier now all right so you can absolutely have methods that take parameters makes them a little more flexible right you can do a little bit more with something like that all right let's get back here so we've had this guy staring us in the face go back to the code for just a second called self Ugh. what in the heck is this self thing what in the world is self all right okay self it's a keyword in python self is a special variable that is only usable within a class that refers to the current instance of the class who it's how a class can access other methods of the class or other class instance variables okay let's take a look at this all right understanding self here's here's my student class all right x gets student x dot say name lucas y gets student y dot say name bob there are two parameters to say name right there's self and then there's name this is the old version of say name okay but there's only one down here when we're calling this method all right so what is happening what is self okay go back to the definition for a second self is a special variable that only is usable within a class that refers to the current instance of the class Ooh, okay x dot say name 
So what happens with self here? You've got this x. x is an instance of student. You are calling in this line say name on this particular instance of the student. Self is the current instance. Okay, so when you are calling x dot say name, basically what is happening is this x right here becomes self. Okay, let that sink in. The dot operator here, when we're using the dot operator, the thing to the left of the dot becomes the self. Okay. So then down here, we've got y is getting a different instance of student. Go, if you don't believe me, go in, use your ID function, use your hex function. You will see that x has a different ID than y. They are different things. Okay. When we call y.sayName, self becomes y. Okay. So we're calling the SANE method on two separate instances of student, X and Y. Go look at this in the Python tutor as well. Okay. Actually, maybe I can do that for you. Let's see if we can fire that up real quick. I'm going to copy this code. Go into the Python tutor. Start visualizing. I want to go into live programming mode because I want to see this thing evolve. How's that? All right. It's not too bad. Let's, let's go to the first step, and then I'm going to step through. Okay. We're going to define our student. Now, it kind of jumped over this whole thing. But the definition of what a student is is alive. Okay. Let's step over here. X gets student. We've got a new student instance. All right. I called say name. So what does it do? Just like in a function call, it's going to jump up to this definition of say name. What do you take a real close look over here in the Python tutor? Look what it has done. In our say name that we're inside of right now, what does self refer to? The same student instance that X refers to. Okay, name is the the parameter value which is currently Lucas. All right, there's no return value. We print, you see the printed out up here? All right, we jump back, we go to the next line. Y gets student, okay? Y is pointing to a separate instance of student. We call y.sayName. It jumps into the definition of say name, but look, Y is this guy. Self has been substituted right here for Y thing on the left side of the dot operator. Okay. So this say name is in refer reference to y, whereas before say name was in reference to x. Okay. It's probably a little bit confusing. Go back, run through this until it starts to sink in. Self is the thing on the left of the dot operator. Okay. All right. So let me go back over here. Whew, self, that's a crazy concept, okay? It's, it's going to be hard. It's, it's going to take a little bit to sink in. Hopefully in the next video, we're going to talk about instance variables, class instance variables. It's going to make a little bit more sense about why we need this self thing, right? Right now, this example, mm, maybe it's a little extra. Maybe it's more than we need, right? Next video, when we're talking about data that we're going to store in these data types, self is going to be really important. Okay. All right. A lot of huge concepts in this video. You can define your own data types with classes in Python. The operations of data types are defined using methods and data are called instance variables. That's going to be the next video. Okay. You must create an instance of a class to use it. And the instances that are in memory that live in the heap, everything in Python, those are objects all together. You can have instances of lots of different things at once in memory. You can have students and ints and floats and strings and lists all living together. Those are all called objects in memory. 
Methods are functions that are defined within a class. Methods can have parameters, but the first parameter is always, always, always the self guy. And what is the self? The self is a special variable inside of classes that refer to the current instance. Okay, the thing on the left of the dot operator when they get called. All right, next video, we're going to take a look at instance variables inside of classes and we'll come back to this self guy again and try and understand why we need him and why he's so useful.